Morning everybody, in this video I'm going to explain to you about the meaning of the word the margin in economics. You can see here this is used in lots of different contexts and you might have come across it and wondered what it means, the margin. And in order to be able to look at lots of different texts, this is something that will come up again and again and you need to be able to understand it. What it means in the margin, in basic terms, is when you have an extra amount of something. And sometimes it's called the point of change. A way of remembering the margin is that this is a piece of paper. When you get a line piece of paper, this section along the left hand side we call the margin. And this is an additional amount of paper. That's a way of remembering it. So you're given this additional amount of paper, this bit along the left hand side. And the margin in any context means that you have an extra amount of something or an additional amount. Economists are often doing experiments to try and predict what's going to happen if there is a change. And they'll do calculations to see if one thing changes, how will it affect everything else. I'm actually going to start at the bottom here and we'll come back to this then at the end. The marginal unit in anything is the additional unit. So for example, this could be one more car being produced in a factory, for example. It could be one more cigarette being smoked. And economists will be looking at what the impact is for different parties of this change. And if it's the marginal unit, usually we're talking about one more of something. But in general, it's an extra amount of something. It doesn't have to be one more unit. It could be 10 more units or 100 more units. And economists are looking at what the impact of this is. So if we go through these, marginal cost is where a business are doing, is doing something. And you see if they, for instance, produce one more car or 10 more cars, what will be the additional cost to the business? And it may be to a business. It may also be to society. If you think of externalities diagrams, you look at the marginal private cost and the marginal social cost of an activity. And that means where you produce or where one extra unit or 10 extra units are consumed. So it could be about production or consumption. And it's looking at the cost to the business, perhaps, for instance, the marginal private cost or the cost to the consumer in a transaction, the marginal private cost. Or it's looking to the cost of society of that, the marginal social cost but it's where an additional amount of something is being consumed or produced. And also when you're looking at theory of the firm, you're looking at the marginal cost for a business of taking an action, for instance, of producing an extra number of units. What's going to be the cost to that business? And every time you produce more units, your costs are going to increase. And that's because of your variable costs. You'll have more variable costs when you produce an extra unit. Your fixed costs won't change. You can also look at the marginal benefit of something. So for instance, if one extra person or 10 extra people go to university, that will have a benefit to them. So this could be a private benefit to the individual. And also you'll have seen marginal social benefit. That would be the marginal benefit to society. And again, it's the marginal benefit because it's where an extra person or people go to university and it's looking at what the benefit is for the entity that you're looking at for those extra people going to university. So again, it's just looking at the benefit from an extra amount of something being consumed or produced. Marginal utility, remember that utility is the same thing as benefit. Usually we're looking at an individual here and we assume that rational consumers are trying to maximise their utility. The marginal utility that's received 
is where an extra amount of something is consumed and it shows you the utility or the benefit to the individual when they consume that extra amount. So for example, if the person consumes one more donut, what will be the benefit from for them? And this is where we often look at diminishing marginal utility. That means that their utility is getting smaller and smaller. It's diminishing when they have extra quantities of something. Because, for instance, if you look at someone eating one more donut, they might get quite a lot of benefit from that. But from the next donut, the marginal donut or the marginal unit, the next one they might get less utility because it's their second donut now. So it could be one more donut or it could be ten more donuts. But the point of it being the marginal utility is when you have the extra amount being consumed, how much benefit does it give to the person? So in all of these cases, you're looking at where a marginal unit, so one more unit or marginal units are being consumed. And this shows the economists how there will be an impact of this extra amount being consumed or produced. This point of change is the additional amount being consumed or produced. And economists want to know what the impact of that will be. So now, hopefully, when you're looking in other contexts at the margin, the marginal cost, the marginal benefit, the marginal utility, the marginal unit, or any other instance of marginal, you will now hopefully be able to understand what this means and therefore find it easier to look at the impact of this in the given situation.